Over 40 years ago, uh, President John Kennedy had a vision of sending a man to the moon and bringing him home again. And that vision fueled a massive investment by this nation at all levels of education, and it drove decades of discovery, innovation, and economic growth, allowing America to become the world's strongest economy and lead the community of nations for generations. Sadly, that investment has fallen off over the last years. With the report, A Nation at Risk, America woke up and saw an education system that no longer served all its children and was failing our future. America had an education system that was operating under a policy of acceptable losses, where only about half of the minority children could read proficiently, and black and Hispanic 17-year-olds were being taught much at the, as math at the same level as white 13-year-olds. Nearly four decades after President Kennedy's decision, America realized its education system was threatening the country's world leadership. Six years ago, we decided to do something bold about it. So what did we do? We made a decision as a nation to raise our expectations and standards for what our, our schools and our children could achieve. We said that it was not good enough for a majority of children in a school district to be learning and, and performing at grade level if their success was allowed to match the fact that many other children were failing to achieve. We asked the states to set higher standards for their schools and students and for those responsible for their education because we believe that if every single child could have access to a highly qualified teacher with a good curriculum and a decent school, they could achieve educational success. We made the performance at our schools transparent and accountable. Today, five and a half years later after the enactment of No Child Left Behind, has brought some positive changes. For example, a recent Center on Education Policy study found gains of students in reading and math proficiency and the narrowing of the achieving gap among groups of students since implementation. There are more qualified teachers in the classroom today because we made it a, a priority. The law is shining the bright light of achievement gaps among different groups of students in the U.S. and among the states. Now, for the first time, we know exactly which students and which groups of students are not learning and performing at grade level. This information makes it impossible for us to ignore those students who are not achieving. And finally, the law has provoked an energetic and national debate about our nation's system of public education and the need for a next generation of investment in our schools, students, principals, and teachers, and that is a good thing. But let me be clear, though. Our schools and students are not making enough progress, not for a country as great as ours. We didn't get it all right. When we, with the first writing of this law and the enactment of this law. Throughout our communities and schools today, the American people have a very strong sense that no child left behind is not fair, it is not flexible, and it is not funded, and they are not wrong. So what are we going to do next? America needs and must have an education law that insists on accountability with high expectations, high standards, and high quality assessments and proper funding. And America must have an education law that treats schools and children fairly, that provides educators and administrators the flexibility they need to meet these standards and that delivers to schools the resources they need to improve and succeed. We can and we must meet both of these objectives in the next stage of education reform in the United States. We would be wrong if we waver when it comes to the existing goals and standards of No Child Left Behind. Closing the achievement gap and helping all children learn to high standards remain the right goals. Holding states and schools accountable for results and renewing our efforts to adequately fund the reforms remains the right approach. But I can also tell you that there are no votes in the House of Representatives for continuing the No Child Left Behind Act without making serious changes to it. It is my intention as chairman of the Education and Labor Committee to pass a bill in September, both on the committee and on the floor of the House, a bill that is fair and flexible, that, remains, that maintains the integrity of the law and accountability while responding to the legitimate concerns that have been raised. As one of the original co-authors of No Child Left Behind, I've always said I was proud to be the author of the law. But what I really want is to be the proud co-author of a law that works. To that end, for five years, I have traveled the country listening to teachers, administrators, students, parents, governors, and many others about how No Child Left Behind can be improved. And I have listened carefully, as have my colleagues. 
and we have heard an emergent consensus about needed changes. As a result, the process by which this bill is being developed is open, transparent, and bipartisan. It reflects the input of members of Congress from both parties, all backgrounds, and all ideological positions who testified and submitted suggest suggestions before our committee. It reflects testimony delivered by nearly two, at nearly two dozen congressional hearings in and outside the Beltway, begun last year by then Chairman McKean. We have been working together on this reauthorization for many months. Chairman McKean has been very helpful and remains important to this process. And it reflects our review and recommendations from more than 100 education, civil rights, and business organizations. Congressman Dale Kildee, the subcommittee uh, chair, and I have met with many of these organizations. My vision for, the, for this next bill is to take America's education policy in a new direction by doing five key things. First, the legislation will provide much needed fairness and flexibility. Many Americans do not believe that the success of our students or of our schools can be measured by one test administered on one day, and I agree with them. This is not fair. We hear concerns that the law has forced schools to focus on, on math and reading instruction at the expense of history, art, social studies, music, and physical education. None of this is required under the law, nor should it be. But we must, we must address it to make sure that students have access to a broad and rich curriculum. The heart of No Child Left Behind is accountability. Our bill will continue to hold schools accountable for all students, including minority and low-income students, students learning English, and those with disabilities. All these students deserve an improved accountability system. The legislation we will introduce will contain a growth model that gives credit to states and schools for progress that these schools make over time. This builds on the principles of a 10-state pilot I guess it's actually 12 or more states now, uh, of a pilot project started by Secretary Spellings. And the Secretary deserves great credit for her leadership on this important issue. These growth models are based on annual assessments, will give us a fairer and better and more accurate information about the progress and the achievement of all of our students throughout the school years. The information will be timely and helpful to teachers and principals in developing strategies for the improvement and targeting of resources. Our legislation will continue to place strong emphasis on the annual assessments for reading and math skills, but allow states to use more than their reading and math, math test results to determine how well schools and students are doing. We will allow eva additional valid and, and reliable measures to be used to assess student learning and school, and and school performance more fairly, comprehensively, and accurately. One such measure for high schools must be graduation rates. The legislation will also drive improvements in the quality and the, and the appropriateness of the tests used for accountability. This is especially important for English lear language learners, students with disabilities, who deserve to be given tests that are fair and appropriate, just as they deserve to be continued to included in our accountability system. We will provide increased resources to help states develop better tests, more accurately more, measure what students have learned tests that will be more useful to teachers and that will drive richer classroom instruction.